so if you see the present problems in agriculture okay so changing weather patterns like erratic weather patterns like high rainfall low rainfall okay so okay so frequency and intensity of drought heat waves flood waves etc and if you see the changing weather patterns are creating more problem nowadays for agriculture crop so then second coming to this water scarcity what is going to be the price factor in future this there may be uh, uh one there may be one precipitation if at if at all only means if at all we are going to receive one thousand monsoon day for it is not at all useful or it is not at all a comfortable for going at crop so for example if we take our district this is in andhra pradesh we will see four thousand as not this monsoon day for 50 50 so some of the crops may uh, we may get in south west monsoon period and some of the crops we may get in uh, rabi season so like that water scarcity is going to be the major role in future climate scenario and the temperature extremes also now we are seeing that this is south west monsoon now, now it is going on now so even we have to receive 500 mm rainfall in the month of june july and august at our location so now so far we didn't receive even 50 mm since starting from june so what is the fate of south west monsoon rainfall uh, depending from it is focused condition in andhra pradesh as on now particularly in rice to my areas so like that we are uh, accompanying with the several of the agriculture related problems with climate change next if you see the pest and disease is also see when we are young whenever there is rainfall when there is a flow of water in the roads and uh, uh, side by our houses we used to see the earthworm isn't it everybody has experienced earthworm nowadays even you dig up to a depth of 10 cm 20 cm also we don't find even a single earthworm this is it so that is our it, it is all because of climate change effect so if you see the pest and disease also new new pests are coming new new diseases are coming because of change in temperature because of change in radio humidity because of change in soil moisture because of change in uh, atmospheric conditions so like that all together overall the crop quality is going to be decreased because of all these scenarios then all that going to be Say for example, in in uh, if you see the almanac calendar and all uh, during our research time, whenever they say that this is the rainfall season, the rainfall is going to come at that particular time at 100 percent of true. This is it. But now if you see, even though the forecast, several forecasts are coming, the forecasts are going to be uh, wrong on most of the times in terms of quantity as well as in terms of quality also. So next one is soil degradation. See the southwest monsoon total rainfall is, say for example, 500 mm. If we are now we are seeing this 500 mm in sometimes in four or five events, very years. So in such conditions, our soil is going to degrade a lot. The top of southern soil is eroding. So such kind of problems we are accompanying with climate change related excess problems. So next, if you see the livestock challenges also, livestock also see because of temperature like us and like plants. Even uh, the livestock, like uh, animals, are also suffering with the heat effect because of increased temperatures and all. And their uh, feeding habits are also becoming changing. Or uh, wherever, whatever the grasses we are giving, they are not able to feed because they are not, not able to take up because of the high temperatures and because of the temperature-related issues and the health disorders of the animals because of climate change scenarios. So if you see, overall the bio diversity is changing. If you see. Uh, the kind of uh, uh, weed, uh, some changes there, and now this we are not able to see this. It is effect of climate change only. Because of climate change, even weed shift is also taking an important role in terms of agriculture. Let's see. So the resource will be the resource will become the more constrained in future days. So we need to adapt to climate change, and it requires more uh, amount of additional uh, income to tackle all these problems. Like uh, we have to investigate a little bit of this. We have to develop drought resistance. We have to develop uh, some breeding technologies, some agronomic technologies, agro-technological technologies. So, by constant efforts to uh, tackle these problems, the resource constraints will become higher and higher, and we have to go along with these uh, constraints only. So, if you see how the uh, climate is impacted, only one or two examples I will tell you, and uh, that is why I go uh, see if doubling of the carbon dioxide is going to be. After our birth, we have come across to CO2 levels. So in 2000, it is around 300 and 320 ppm in the ppm in the 
carbon dioxide level. Now it is liter plus how much? More than 400. I think it is nearing 420 or uh, uh, yeah, 420 or 421. Also, uh, if the temperature increases, see, car if carbon dioxide is going on increasing, temperature will also increase. But one is favorable for agriculture crops and one is not favorable for agriculture crops. See, carbon dioxide is increasing, which is good for our photosynthetic temperature. But at the same time, temperature is also increasing. So, at a, at a point, we have to cut by both the uh, combinations at certain points. So, that certain point should be uh, the priority for our research purpose. So, if you see, um, if the temperature is going on to increase, the duration of the crop will, what happens? What will happen to crop duration? It will reduce the See, in physiology of any human being or any crop also, the temperature dependent. If you choose anything comes, it will shorten the phenology or it will shorten the life cycle of a human being or animal or anything. So, like that, if carbon dioxide is increasing up to 450 ppm, it needs 1 degree. You see, 1 degree increase needs 450 ppm of carbon dioxide to nullify the effect of the 1 degree. So, similarly, for the 2 degree rate, we have to need 550 ppm of so what happens if bad, bad is a major uh, food crop for us? So if you see, if increase in carbon dioxide is there, there is, there is an increment in yield. But at the same time, temperature increment is not required by the crop because spike is 70 percent major role. Sanitary uh, initiation or sanitary abortion may, uh, uh, may be the effective one in tagging. So less than 22, more than 33 is not capable for Particularly uh, for the uh, spike experience. And wheat, as I said, some of the uh, uh, weeds are going to be increased in future because of CO2. If you see the post of diagram, in current, uh, this is uh, during 2000, that 380 ppm current carbon dioxide, this is an experiment conducted somewhere. Uh, if you see, there is a, an increment in uh, population of weeds in 680 ppm carbon dioxide level. Uh, so, like that, some weeds may increase, some weeds may going to decrease in frequent energy. So, instance of test and this is also. With increase in temperature, certain test population may increase in future, future days. Say, for example, thrift. So, uh, those diseases which are connected to thrift may also prevail in future days. See, if temperature is going to increase, leaf quality is going to increase. This is the increase. So, what kind of patients is the temperature? As a student, we have to note down and we have to work out the future value. Next. So, if you see the best range also, say for example, earlier this, if only one generation is going to survive for one degree rate in temperature, now as far as it is two, three generations we are going to be in that particular restricted time period. Okay. So, in, uh, because of the high temperature, soil respiration as we have gone through the soil cell studies, soil respiration rate may increase exponentially with the temperature. Sir. So, what will happen? The potential organic carbon content will be going to be down in any of the uh, ecosystem, any of the crop ecosystems. So, increase in this precipitation may increase the diseases also. This is it. Fungal diseases, high rainfall travels the fungal diseases. Most of the diseases are through fungus or some as per like the conditions. All these are prone to high rainfall situations. So, uh, for increasing of uh, diseases, for increment of uh, pests, these weather favorable, weather favorable conditions are very important. <coughs> so, if you see climate change as a whole, this land, soil, water, biota, and environmental quality is going to be degraded in future scenarios. And uh, if you see the effect of that uh, particular condition, uh, there may be nutrient loss, there may be soil loss, there may be lowering of groundwater, there may be Production. So, like that, several effects will be there for future scenarios. And if you see the indirect effects, because of those effects uh, caused by this climate change, livelihood security will become the question mark. So, we have to uh, be vigilant with uh, whatever we see the education scenarios we are coming across. We have to uh, be with, uh, we have to look for all the scenarios which our key right. So, what is the target behind us? We have to meet 345 million tons of food waste by 2030, which is our nearest future. So, India needs that much of food waste. So, what, how we are going to tackle this problem? We have to see. 
the sustainable farming practices in every aspect of need of the hour. So, agro agricultural approaches like uh, saving the crop, soil health, and uh, saving the uh, optimizing the water use of the crop, and we are we have to promote the biodiversity in each and every aspect. We have to we have to be vigilant, and uh, by conserving the tillage and uh, by uh, practicing uh, different cropping systems without following mono cropping or without the following a single practice every year. Instead of that, we have to change the pattern of the crop, or we have to change the practices of the uh, particular crops also. So this is the one of the picture in my experiment I have taken. See, when I have joined in the uh, regional research research in Tirupati, the soil given to me, the plot given to me is with 0.3% organic carbon concentrate. So continuously for seven years I took the lectures from in that particular plot, and I have I have I have left all the uh, resistance in the field only. All the biomass I plowed there in the same field, and after that, after seven years. The organic carbon is not reaching zero point seven. Even in permanent business files, also after conducting thirty to forty years of uh, applying this formula, we will also won't uh, raise the organic carbon to such a level. So that is the power of uh, these uh, organic like uh, um, whether it may be next next uh, yeah whether it may be green manure or green leaf manure or uh, uh, plant base uh, everything everything it has to. Going to the soil. So for that we need some technologies. So we need some technologies. How the crop is going to capture carbon dioxide from the atmosphere? How it is going to convert it into carbon and it uh, soil the soil? So for for such type of situations, we have to think of and we have to come up with some of the solutions. So whatever may be the water requirement needed by the crop, we have to think of because for every crop, only optimum level of water requirement. If needed, even for irrigated crops as well as uh, rainfed crops. So, for example, you, if I am working in the uh, rainfed groundnut, groundnut doesn't need if 100 percent soil moisture is there by taking up the soil of the rainfed groundnut. After emergence of the crop, we don't give rainfall, we don't give any moisture after 20 to 25 days. But the crop will survive. Even one of my uh, PhD work, what uh, we have come across is. For 56 days, there is no rainfall for rainfed groundnut. For continuously for 56 days, but the crop survived. Rainfed crop without giving any supplemental irrigation, the crop survived, and we received a need of 900 kg per acre. That is the capability of some of the crop by by nature. So that we have to pinpoint, and that we have to take it into the uh, research promotion. Sir. So if you see, for example, for if by taking one sunflower crop. Once sunflower crop is uh, uh, irrigated, uh, we can uh, we can take sorry with one crop of paddy instead of taking one paddy crop, we can go for four acres of one acre of paddy is equal to four acres of paddy crop. The water requirement what I am saying. Okay, so in such conditions, we have to um, we have to concentrate on different cropping zones. Which cropping zone is potential for raising sunflower crop? Which cropping zone is uh, uh, potential for raising the paddy crop? I will show you in my in my data sheet. Then a balanced use of fertilizers also. Now everywhere it is natural farming, it is organic farming. Everybody is saying that. But when it is to sustain at at present situations, that we have to think of. So without going for a complete hundred percent inorganic fertilizer, we have to mix up with organic as well as inorganic. So the soil health may not deteriorate in future scenarios. So next, uh, uh, this is our prime objective: varietal adaptation and uh, data sowing for our agrometallurgy people. Data sowing and variety, isn't it? Sir? So many of the experiments we are performing on data sowing, okay? Data sowing. But uh, how far we are uh, uh, coming out with good results? We are saying that, say, for example, if we are taking five six data sowing, what we are uh, uh, coming out is this data sowing is performing good because of this 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 condition. Isn't it? So, for example, if the farmer is uh, losing that data sowing, what is the next option? That we have to see. Even though we have taken up this data sowing, we have to see the percent loss of the yield with each data sowing. So, such type of uh, outcome we have to draw from the data sowing experiments. So, adjusting plant rates also uh, may, uh, may, may some of the offset for this kind of climate change controls. So, tolerance to Heat, tolerance to temperatures, tolerance to 
any kind of stress type of varieties are needed for the current situation yes. so as i said use of organic like cornea manure green manure green leaf manure in any of the way we have to provide this uh, such type of material for carbon fixation because carbon is the only life for soil without the life in the soil we can't get any yield so generating the technology as per the environmental changes in the morning also we have seen in the several minutes uh, with the increment of 37 degrees the uh, temperature the population of bbh is going to be increased so for such kind of uh, temperature what is the optimum level what is the mortality rate we have seen reducing the temperature is not in our hands but alternate technologies to uh, to address that type of uh, problem is needed that is that we have to think of Next one. So any new technology because cloudy cultivation is releasing a so lot of nitrogen production. So nitrogen oxide emissions are also there by using urea fertilizer, sir. In this case, we have urea fertilizer. So for such type of new technologies, sir, like all these days, three technologies, system of fertilization. So very common. So like that, we have to see which type of system is giving highest nitrogen content, which is giving lowest nitrogen. These are the people are working on. Screening the varieties for high temperature, for heat, heat stress. But what these are the people are doing? Uh, they will, they will see the, they will see the varieties in the lab up to generation, up to generation only. And the agro material is our agro is what we have to do. We have to take up those varieties and we have to test in the field up to the harvesting stage. We don't know whether the capability of that particular uh, variety of the seed or particular uh, crop is. Uh, having that much capacity under field level, okay. So whatever the variety is released by physiology people should be thoroughly checked in the field conditions for thermotolerance. So from here, I am going to present our work. What we have taken up in last ten to fifteen years, and uh, see, say for example, I am working as a technical officer means I have to work in GKM project only. I have I I, I should not attempt agronomy experiments. So that is the case for a ten years for me also at uh, my station. But after that, we realized a lot, and we fight it. And I, have, I, I took so many of the metallurgical experiments with a with a grammy base. So first one is micro crop planning. For the present uh, climate in Kerala, need micro crop planning in in every aspect, in terms of fertilizer, in terms of moisture, in terms of whatever it may be input we are giving the crop. We need micro crop planning for that particular crop for particular situation. Next. So in micro crop planning, what we did, we have the resource. What uh, agronomical people are having resource of database. The database is the main resource. So from the database, we may we, we may do several of exercises for getting some of the output. So we have mapped the range for variability in each and every block. So in entire Andhra Pradesh, in older world version, it is 13 districts with the number of uh, mandals. So almost uh, 6 and 15 mandals. So for all the all the block, we worked out the rainfall variability. Next, so we worked out the deviations, we worked out the trends, we worked out the correlations for that. We worked out the correlations and we compared that with the present conditions. We have taken data of last past twenty thirty years and we are comparing with the present situation. So from that, whatever is the problem now we are facing, we are we 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 try to locate the solution also from the same situation. Next. So I think all those, almost all these people have gone across to, through this rainfall analysis. We worked out rainfall analysis for expected amount of rainfall at fixed probabilities, as well as fixed amount of rainfall at particular expected probabilities. So like that, we have planned for land preparation for sowing, how much rainfall is required. So for weeding and fertilizer application, we have made some threshold limit for each and every batch of the practice. Next, sir. if you see, see for for each and everything, I will put one one slide only, uh, just uh, for your understanding. Here we worked out the spatial and temporal variability of rainfall in each and every district. Each district carries some fifty to eighty mandals, eighty blocks. So each district we have locations of fifty to eighty locations. Sir. For that particular eighty locations, we worked out the variability of spatial as well as temporal. And if you see the CV CV that is ranging from sixteen point four to 101 in Krishna district. In East Godavari, it is up to 126.9. So, like that, for each monsoon period, for southwest as well as northeast monsoon, uh, for entire crop period, like that, for some of the crops like red crop, 
which, uh, which comes up to 150, 130 days, uh, both monsoon rainfalls are uh, useful. So for such type of situation, we work out the TDs. And here, we made it a different quartiles. Say for example, see, that entire TV range we put in one column and we separated it because, you see, if less than 45.62% TV mandal we, we plotted in one side and above 54% TV mandal we plotted in another, in center. If you see, what, see, I have put some rain in the air, some of the mandals. Those mandals receive nearly 1500 to 1700. 1700 mm of annual rainfall. Are you understanding? 1500 to 1700 mm of annual rainfall, those bundles receive. See where they are falling. The PD level is 54.4 acres. So we cannot depend on that particular bundle for the same crop for every each and every season. Because that is the dangerous bundle, even though they receive 1500 to 700, 1700 mm of rainfall. So the moderate PD values we can take up. So depending upon these. Uh, process only, uh, we have to plan for any crop or cropping system in that particular locality. Next, this is another district, Karpa. If you see here, the CV is above 65.2 in another district. So, like that, it may go even up to 100 percent in each and every season. But depending upon the quartiles and depending upon the quantification, we have to take up any new crop or cropping system. I think at this you all might know the initial and conditional probability to take up the sowing wheat. Then what we have made is for 30 years we worked out these probabilities based upon the 30 years rainfall data and we made it for uh, continuous of 2 weeks and 3 weeks, 4 weeks like that and we made this analysis for 30 mm rainfall, 50 mm rainfall, 75 mm rainfall we made these probabilities and we classified the mandals. Which mandal fall under sowing week of 23rd week? Which mandal is favorable for, sowing, for taking the rain fed crop under 23rd standard week? Like that, we have classified each and every block uh, for the uh, sowing week. So, like that, for giving the agro advantage, we made map graphs, like, we, we made tables like this. Say, so we divided the division and we have given the probabilities of 25%, 10%, 50%, uh, of getting the that much of amount of rainfall in each and every standard region. Say for example, if you want to take up any fertilizer application or if you need give some application to ground it, we need some moisture in the soil. So whether there is any probability of getting that 10 mm or 25 mm of rainfall in the particular week, we can check it with this and we can side by side, we, can, we have to see the forecast of that particular week also. That we can, by using this type of historical source and using the IMD data, we can we can do the eco advantage in the farming community. Next, excess rainfall events also we worked out. Uh, and from this, what we have to conclude, there is every possibility of sea. For example, if you see the summer rainfall probability of getting 50 mm of rainfall, it is increasing in the research cost. So, summer rainfall, nowhere we are replacing. Only until and unless it comes in the month of May, we are using it for preparation of the uh, land for uh, taking up the curry soils. So what we thought of, what we thought is, if, if we are going to get the six events of 50 mm rainfall, why can't we use this uh, summer rainfall uh, as one of the, uh, for, for, for raising one of the crops during summer. So that, that the natural farming objective will also we are going to meet uh, by, without uh, exposing our soil to uh, high temperatures and uh, protecting our uh, environment and biota, soil, biota or soil microorganisms in the soil. So like that. Uh, if the excess rainfall events are there, we can use number of farm ponds. We can store number of, uh, we can subtract number of farm ponds and we can store water. And during southwest monsoon period, when there is any dry spell, there is a possibility of giving the supplemental irrigation through this pond. So like that, though we are doing this analysis and we are putting the, in the table, that information should be practically useful. That information we have to take it into practical orientation. Next. Then here if you see the probability of water balance for each and every mandal of rain fed district, we worked out the probability for uh, water balance for rain fed crop as well as paddy crop. So here I have given this is the average of 30 years data. This water balance is for 30 years. So here what we have taken that the green um, labeled one that is the 50 percent probability. We left 25 percent probability and lost 75 to 100 percent probability. When we average that 50 percent probability of the 
uh, water balance. So if you see the table here, if we take up the grounded crop in B. Kottapata as given in the title, that B. Kottapata is one of the name of the block. So if you take up the sowing in the 30th standard middle of the week, we are going to satisfy the crop up to water requirement is 67.1 only. Are you getting? Are you getting? Next slide. Now. See, for the same mandal, for the same block B Kota Kota, if the sowing is going to be taken up in the month in 33 standard middle of the week, the water requirement satisfaction date is 72.2. So which kind of sowing you will prefer if the, if the condition is normal, if the southwest monsoon forecast is good? Huh? Which standard week? 33. 33. And uh, one more thing is, the, for B in this comes under Chittu district. This B Pattapota. Because I am uh, giving examples of one district only for your understanding. But we did it for all the districts and all the blocks in the state. So here, we, if we take up the sowing in 33 standard middle of LP, the water requirement satisfaction index is at a higher size. So the crop success is more when we take up the sowing in the 33 standard week instead of 30th standard week. So, uh, such kind of things we have to be utilizing practical way. So, here also you can see in wild Padu, this is another block. Here also, if the sowing is on 24th standard week, WRSA is 61%. And the 28th standard week sowing, it is 72.9. So, like that, we have to think of. These are all not given anywhere. Just we have to think of and we have to formulate and we have to get some solution out of the uh, problem what is actually nowadays. Next. Uh, so then, this is the water balance of uh, one of the wild pardumenta for grounded crop. Here also I have given the sales. And if you see this one, whether the crop is going to fall under deficit condition or surplus condition, if you see, we can know how much of the water we have to supplement for a rainfed crop as a supplemental irrigation whether we have that much of facility for taking up the supplemental irrigation. Whether to give one half supplemental irrigation or two supplemental irrigation, we can we come across to that the deficit. That I have given a deficit. So to meet the requirement of water requirement satisfaction index of 100 percent the deficit amount of 24.2 mm of the uh, moist that should be given to either supplemental irrigation or to any other methodology. And here uh, for our north coastal district, for our district, there is some coastal area is also there. But the production and productivity levels as compared with all the, all the districts, the north coastal districts are giving very less amount of yields, ranging from 2 to 3 tons of paddy yields. Okay, 2 to 3 tons. Where our highest paddy yields goes even up to 8 tons per hectare also in some of the districts. So, uh, we have, uh, we search for the problem and we search for the solution also in the same method, the same method. See, in Sri Kapulam, next. In Vijayanagaram, next. In Vishakapatnam, next. See, this table. This is the outcome of that uh, uh, three tables. Sir. See, these three districts cover not coastal zone of our district. So here, the water requirement satisfaction is, is seems to be the similar with the one or uh, two percent. See, 50.7, 52, 53.25 for that uh, three districts. But if you see the range, one is 40 to 59, one is 35 to 71, one is 41 to 79.8. Now I'll ask you one question. In Vidyanagaram district, with the water requirement satisfaction index of 35, 35, is there any need to go to raise a paddy crop? As a student, you tell me. Anybody? With water requirement satisfaction index of 35.1, this water requirement satisfaction is worked only based upon the rainfall. Rainfall the student? This is for 30 years of that particular location. Now you tell me, with the 35 percent, 35 of what, what are the WRS value of 35, is there any need to go for a paddy sir? Abruptly? No. Isn't it? So, such mandals we have to take up. Definitely it will be, it will give lesser yield or the crop may fail at the end of the situation or middle of the situation or short of the situation. So, such kind of scenario we have to find out from the this is the rainfall data. Okay. Then coming to length of growing period. This length of growing period is also our middle of the uh, one parameter. And for, uh, for all the mandals, we worked out the LDPs. In long back in history, this NBHS LDP has given uh, length of growing period for all the uh, states and all, for all the districts. So, uh, challenging that one, for all the districts, we have to find out the length of growing period. Okay. Length of growing period is 
we worked out because we have micro level data block level data so we worked out the length of dwelling period for all the districts and blocks of the state and we have categorized it. we classified that into 12 to 20 weeks say for example 12 to 20 weeks or 20 to 30 weeks about that we like that we have classified and we have see and we also every time we go for an optimum time of going this is it optimum going this now what is it for that optimum time of going if there is no rain at all what is the next option so thinking that we have taken two going week starting week 1 and starting week 2 if the farmer is going to miss the starting week 1 he can go for second week also at that time we have to see the length of growing period also whether it is going to reduce whether it is going to support your normal crop like groundnut or some other short grass crop we have to go for see if the duration one is, uh, i have highlighted with the cream color where in third fourth fifth you see 18 22 20 are the uh, duration weeks but if that is missing and we are going for second week it is going down to 30 19 17 like that so 30 into 7 is 91 days and if you see 18 into 3 is 18 into 3 is yes for 18 weeks we will get the groundnut crop but whether 30 weeks it is 90 days crop only 91 days crop only that we have to think of whether any groundnut crop without supporting irrigation whether it will sustain in that particular area or not so such kind of exercises we have to think like See here, 21 to 24 week. We we classify depending upon the crop duration. Next, next, 25 to 27 week.
some of the information may be useful to you. Definitely, whatever we are doing, um, uh, we will say one uh, report in Telugu. Good day to Telo Patakrata. Means, uh, if we close the eyes of uh, a cow and leave it in the field, eh, how far it will go? Like that, uh, our experiments will not be like that. Eh. At least one of the two, one useful information, uh, we have to take over. These are all normal experiments only. What I have projected is normal experiments only. But based on the local problem, uh, see, one of the varieties, paddy variety, RNR uh, 1208. Uh, that variety they are telling is, uh, is uh, for uh, sugar patients with uh, less sucrose uh, uh, levels, like that they are telling. Glycemic uh, 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 yes, less is there. For that variety is very useful to weather. So, in the uh, see, in BP to 52 Nasco is very fine variety, very it? Uh, to 52 Nasco, what we are using for uh, our general uh, uh, feeding purpose. That variety, it, it looks similar to this variety. Is this, uh, what uh, that uh, uh, people are doing is they are activating that and they are mixing it with the BP to 52 Nasco. That is the prime cause. But that variety, if a uh, farmer take up one or two acres, it is well and good. Hectares together, they will raise this crop. If suddenly any extreme, weather extreme comes, the entire crop will get collapsed. If any minimum temperature falls to uh, uh, less than 0.2 degrees, also that variety is very sensitive. It is very thermal sensitive variety. It is not coming with Ah, very good. Yes, sir. But that is the problem. Because our weather is the only problem for uh, not only in the food, but in the area. Also, uh, uh, in mango also. This is the city's prime area for the mango also. But uh, the, during last 2-3 years back, uh, mango covered 4 times per year. 4 times. People received 4 times. Next year, 1. 0. Like this, uh, these weather fluctuations uh, are going to play a major role in future scenarios also. But uh, future is for regular material story, I'll say. If you keep on a key night and each and every aspect, definitely. Because we have to think of as an agrometrology student and what to see, now we are like this. What we are going to give for our future generations, definitely something we have to give. Our forefathers have given this life to us. So definitely, uh, it is our social responsibility to think of. So think, think, think and do good. See, when I am entering into the room also, uh, your coat is there, your routine is coat. Otherwise, otherwise, not well. Definitely in future, it is hundred percent. Thank you. Uh, thank you, madam, for your exhaustive lecture from uh, you know very diversified field from the uh, agrometrology, agronomy to even rust uh, or uh, even mushroom. Uh, you know, you are being the instrumental. Uh, uh, in carrying, uh, that means uh, carrying research in diversified field. It's opening uh, uh, our eyes for even looking for more diversified uh, role of agrometrologists in the, all the disciplines of uh, agriculture. Thank you, Madam, for your exhaustive and uh, very uh, enthusiastic lecture. Good evening to all. Whether uh, rain showers at your state or not, you showered a lot to us, Madam. Thank you for us. And also, we thank for that Tirupati Prashad. Okay. It's a very good lecture, madam, because it's a very good and eye-opener for all our students. Because you thrash out, completely thrash out the basic uh, basics of agrometeorology and uh, give the good information to us. Thank you. Thank you very much. And don't think the lysimeter, madam, you purchased an automatic lysimeter. What is the cost of it? Uh, we need the address because uh, we focus uh, some projects uh, the rice meters. Is it oh, for volumetric or gravimetric? Vol volumetric. Madam, nice presentation here. <laughs> uh, so you have worked out the probability for WRSI in your past slides. What is the requirement? Because already we are uh, arriving the WRSI values for individual week. So what is the requirement to work out the probability for these? What is the requirement to work out the probability? So, in WRSA, the probability is beyond 50%. These you worked out for, this is the data plus degree. 